Today, we're going to take a look at brute forcing SSH in three different ways on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. SSH, or the Secure Shell, is a protocol that allows us to log into computers remotely via the command line, and it is extremely popular. Now, one downside to SSH is that if you use a bad password, it is relatively easy to break into. And today, we're going to follow a guide by DRD, which shows us three separate ways of actually going about and doing this. Now, in order to follow along, I recommend you have a computer with Kali Linux installed. Although you can do this with Ubuntu, but you'll need to go through some additional installation steps. The reason I recommend Kali is that everything will be pre-installed and you don't need to worry with things like maybe compiling Hydra and figuring out that the SSH module didn't work, which is exactly what happened to me. Now, aside from that, you can also check out the Nullbyte article if you get confused because there's troubleshooting steps there that can help you along the way. Once you have a Linux computer and a, SS a computer running SSH on the same network as you, then we can get started. OK, so today we're going to be busting into SSH using brute forcing. But first, I just want to show you what all this looks like. So if I wanted to connect to the computer at 192.168.254.13, I could just type in in a Linux terminal SSH and then whatever username at that address. Now what happens is it'll ask you for the password. And then boom, I'm basically inside this computer. I can LS, I can do all sorts of stuff. And if I type who am I, I can see that I am the, uh, well, root of that computer. So, I, or at least the user who is root. Cool. So this is just a, the way that a normal SSH connection works. But if I'm a hacker and I want to break into the system, I need to figure out the username and password that allows me in first. Now, there are ways that you can also set things that are not just a password, like a, uh, like a, pro a public key or something like that. But uh, we're not going to go into that today because this is mostly just brute forcing for bad passwords. And bad passwords, again, are passwords that are default, especially. So if the machine comes with it, then it's probably a bad password. Uh, and also ones that are just really simple words or just things you could find in the dictionary. OK, so this is the article we're going to be looking at today, and it's written by DRD. You can see that there are three different methods we're going to be trying out. And the first is Metasploit. And I think this is actually the most involved method because it, you have to do the Postgres SQL database. You need to do a couple other steps too just to get it started. But here you can see the first thing we need to do is actually be able to discover which of our uh, devices on the network might have an SSH port open. And for that, we can use Nmap. And I'm going to start in this middle console here. So if I wanted to do an Nmap scan on my network, first I need to get the network range. So I can type ifconfig, and this is going to be a lot of input, so I'll do pipe grep inet. And this is just how I kind of shorten that command so I can see the IP address without needing a bunch of other unnecessary information. And I can see my IP address is 192.168.254.19. Cool. Now, what can I do about this? Well, I if I want to get the network range, I can type ipcalc and then paste that in. And boom, I have the network range right here. It's 192.168.254.024. Now, why do I need this for my Nmap scan? Well, if I don't have this, then I can't scan the entire network. So this is what I need, basically, to direct my Nmap scan to scan every single device on the network and give me a report back about what's happening. Now, I'm going to write an Nmap scan that's uh, Nmap. And I'm already root, so I don't need to do sudo, but normally you would need to. So Nmap, I'm going to do the network range, which is here. And then I'll just, just do dash p 22, because that's the port number of SSH typically. And then I will go ahead and also do dash dash open. And what that does is only shows me information about ports that are open, because I don't, I don't care about devices that have that port closed. So you can see the original command here is just nmap, and then a specific uh, network address, and then dash p 22. Uh, that's fine, but I want to scan my entire network and I only want to see port 22s that are open. So my command is a tiny bit longer. All right, so we'll go ahead and run this command. And then as soon as the information comes back, we will hopefully see a device that has port 22 open. And that will be the target that we're going after today. And of course, uh, port 22 can be open on a number of different, oh, there we go, on a number of different things, uh, not just the target we're looking for today. 
And we're using port 22 because it's the default port, but if you're clever, as I was gonna say, uh, you can put this on another port that someone might not be scanning on. So a lot of people that just don't want to have 22 open and obviously hosting SSH, We'll host it on something else and manually specify it when they're logging in. So that's something you can do if you want to be a little bit sneaky. So here we found the device that we're looking for. We are looking at our Alpha Wireless Network card, which I know is the one that belongs to our test device, and we found an open SSH port here. So I can go ahead and copy this, and then we can move on to the next step of using Metasploit to be able to attack this. But I think I'm actually gonna do this in a little bit of a different order than the article, because if you look above in this terminal session, I have another Nmap command that allows me to actually brute force the password on this without even needing to use another tool. So one thing about Nmap that's really cool is that it has scripting. And you can use scripting like this SSH brute forcing script to be able to use Nmap not just as, as a scanning tool, but also as an attack tool. Now, there are two elements here we need to add aside from identifying our target. So we see the Nmap and then the, the network address, IP address for our target, which is 192.168.254.13. We see we're targeting port 22, and then we invoke a script. And we're like, all right, we're gonna run a script and it's the SSH brute forcing one. Now, the arguments that we're passing, which is what this indicates here, are that the user database, so the list of usernames is users.txt, and the list of passwords we're using is passwords.txt. And let me show you what those are, just so you know. All right, so I'm gonna cat uh, users.txt. And you can see we only have a couple, one, two, three, four, five different usernames in there. And if I were to cat passwords.txt, you can see I only have one, two, three, four, five. Now, why is that for the purpose of our demonstration? Why wouldn't I have a ton more? Well, because in order to run this attack on all these different methods, I need to try every possible password for wow, every possible password for root, every possible password for tour. So it's this times this entire list each time we go through another one of these usernames. So you really wanna to stick to default usernames or ones that you suspect might be there. You don't wanna run every possible username because for one, there are a lot of default usernames which might not be possible to be disabled. And for two, it just takes forever. Although I will recommend out of all of these, uh, Hydra is by far the fastest that I've tested. So let's see the result of this command then. Once we indicate all these things, we have our passwords.txt and our users.txt, let's run it and see what it looks like. So you can see it's not that fast. It's going after um, each pair and we are able to see its progress pretty obviously. And it seems also that this, uh, unless I'm misinterpreting it, is running a single thread. Okay, there we go. So we found valid credentials. It's Tor and Root, some of the most secure uh, credentials you could possibly have. So this is pretty stupid, but as you can see, it still took us a little bit to go through what really wasn't that many passwords and usernames. And I would recommend again, just trying something like admin or root, and then just having a ton of passwords you throw against it. It's probably the more effective way of doing this, but either way, we got a successful result. And while it did take a little bit of time, we were able to still brute force. Um, it was only 28 guesses in 19 seconds. That's not too bad, but the average time uh, per uh, TPS, I uh, passwords per second is 1.5. So that's not too impressive. So let's go ahead and dive into Metasploit and maybe we can get some better speed and we'll be able to crack this a bit faster. So I'm going to collapse this terminal window. window. Cool, it worked. All right, so now let's go back to the article and we're gonna start Metasploit by first starting the Postgres SQL server. Cool. And we should already have Metasploit installed by default, provided that we have Kali Linux. So uh, this is not in code box, but we can see the command to start up Metasploit is MFS console. And the reason that we start this up uh, first, the Postgres SQL database is just because that's where um, all the information from Metasploit is stored. Although sometimes I still get database errors, even if I do that but we don't really need to worry about that too much. So, all right, we're in Metasploit, cool. We can type help and we get a lot of information about what Metasploit is. And I definitely am gonna go over Metasploit as its own separate uh, video because there's a lot of stuff going on here. You can see there's um, just tons of commands and tons of things to get into. But today we're gonna be focusing on a module that allows us to brute force SSH. So we'll type search SSH and we get a list of vulnerabilities and all this other stuff, but really what we're looking for, I actually need to make this smaller so it makes sense. There we go. 
Um, really what we're looking for is a module. So we have, uh, oh, denial of service. Corrupting keys, no, no, no. We want the one that is SSH login. So I'll just go ahead and copy this and we'll select the one we're going to use. This will then designate the auxiliary scanner SSH and then SSH login brute forcer as the module we're gonna use. And then I can type show options. And these are all the things we can set with Metasploit before just uh, deploying this payload. And these are these are kind of fill in the blank sort of things. And most of them are not required, as you can see. However, there are some that are required and we need to fill these in before we actually go ahead with them. So let's go ahead and do that. So you can see in the article here uh, that we need to first set our remote host. So we'll set our hosts to 192.168.254.13. And we don't need to designate a port. All right, so now if I type show options, um, oh no, it, it doesn't show that, it just shows it again. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and then set the stop on success to be true. If we don't do this, it'll just keep on going. I'm gonna go ahead and set the user file to users.txt and mine is named the same, so I don't need to change it. But if yours is named something different, you'll need to change that. All right, we've now designated, designated users.txt. We need to set the password file to passwords.txt. Cool. And then we'll set verbose to true, which means we'll basically, we'll basically be able to see more output from the program as it runs. Okay, so now we're at the point where we can type run and all of these settings should uh, have taken effect. Let's going to, let's go ahead and actually, can I do just show, show our host? Okay, whatever. So I'm gonna type run and it should begin the attack. <laughs> and as you can see, even though I started the database, it still can't find it, So, but that's fine. So you can see here, it still seems to be doing a single thread. Then again, I didn't specify that it should run more threads and I can see that that's actually one of the options. So um, it's not going too super fast, but we are chugging along through the password list and we should be able to eventually get our correct credential. You can see it's really crawling along, which is kind of sad because I'm on a local network. This isn't even remote, but uh, either way, you can see we're gonna close in there and get the right password. There we go. So we were successful in making sure that this uh, finished as soon as we got a result. Otherwise we would be locked in this even though we got a success. So we have even opened up a command shell session. Ooh. Uh, and now we have the auxiliary module execution is complete. So that's cool. We have a, we have a session open. Um, can I type show, show sessions? Wow, that's cool. All right, so we have a session on this client now. Metasploit is ready to start attacking it. Okay, well, that's uh, way beyond what uh, Nmap did. We're basically at the point where we can start scanning around on the system and doing other stuff, but the speed was slow. I didn't like it. So let's see what we can do using Hydra. Now, Hydra should be pre-installed on Kali Linux, but if you don't have it, you need to make sure that when you compile it, the SSH module is not something that's included in just the default compilation. So when you're looking through all these tons of files, blah, 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 how to compile here, this part is really important. If you want to use the SSH module, you have to set up libssh, not SSH2 on your system. Get it from here. <sighs> So if you, uh, once you get that, then you should be able to um, set the flag to uh, right here, the D with SSH on. This will enable you to use the SSH module. Now, Kali Linux already has this all baked in, but if you're building this from scratch on like Ubuntu or something, then this is something you need to know or you won't be able to use the module. So do not do these steps without first doing this. I really, really wish they would just tell you this maybe here, like before the rest of these steps, but they don't. And that's why I found this out on Ubuntu. It's also well why I'm doing it on Kali now. Okay, so let's see what the result of this is. Here we have Hydra, tack L for a list of users, tack P for a list of passwords. And then we have SSH um, colon slash slash 192.168.254.13, our target. So this is the format for attacking SSH. This is basically letting Hydra know that we're attacking an SSH server and it'll act accordingly. If you don't put this in, then that uh, it'll think maybe we're attacking FTP or something else. Now we're also going to do threaded uh, threaded attacks. So in this case, I'm going to open eight threads. And that means that we will be uh, trying passwords uh, from eight different threads concurrently. And hopefully that will make this a lot faster than the other two options. So let's go ahead and try that. 
I also like that this uh, requirement to not use in military secret service organizations or for illegal purposes. Uh, oh, we're done. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Hydra's really fast. So yeah, so I really like that this uh, please do not use military secret service organizations has now, if you look at this uh, on the, the main page, become much more disillusioned. Uh, now it's just uh, talking about how no one has morals anymore. So it's it's kind of funny. But either way, um, Hydra is incredibly fast. And as you saw, by opening eight tasks uh, and going through the 25 concurrent logins very, very quickly, four tries per task, we were able to get this in seconds. So Hydra is by far the fastest for SSH cracking. If you don't you know, manually specify, you wanna open a bunch of other threads. To be fair, I probably should have opened like eight threads on Metasploit too, but you know, it wasn't one of the default options, so I didn't do it. If you wanna try this out yourself and see if you can get Metasploit to outperform it, please let me know in the comments if I should give it another try. But uh, just having tried it a couple times, I still find Hydra to be by far the fastest for SSH cracking. If you like this tutorial, be sure to check out our website where we have hundreds of free articles and videos, as well as premium paid content like the Ethical Hacking Certification Bundle, which features pen testing with OWASP Zap, WordPress hacking and hardening, and the CompTIA Cybersecurity Analyst Prep Course. Check out the link in the description below. Now, as we demonstrated today, there are a lot of viable attacks against SSH, provided a bad password is used. Now, there's some ways to prevent this, like using a key instead of using a password. But in general, as you saw, some of these attacks take quite a lot of time. So if someone were to use a relatively obscure username and a really unique password, it would still take a pretty long time to actually brute force all the possibilities. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you got confused, you can always check out the Null Byte article linked in the description because it has troubleshooting steps for you there. If you have any ideas for future episodes, you can send me a message on Twitter at Cody Kinsey because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.